Hey guys, welcome back. I'm in the shop this Saturday morning, just kind of working on some projects, trying to catch up a little bit and shooting some project videos. But I had the idea to kind of go over some of the different glues that I use in the shop, as well as the different glue containers and why I have them and what kind of some of their pros and cons are. You've seen some of these inside our project videos and things. And so I thought this would be a great time just to just kind of go over them um, and kind of talk to you a little bit about them. As far as the glues that I use in my shop, predominantly I use contact cement. And the contact cement that I use is just this Weldwood contact cement. You can get this at any hardware store, um, paint supply, stuff like that. They'll usually have this. Construction guys use this for putting on, I think, Formica and different floorings and things like that. It's a, it's a good uh, industrial contact cement. It does have a lot of fumes to it, so you want to be sure you've got a a well ventilated space if you're doing a lot of gluing and things like that. But this is gonna be very similar to your barge or master's contact cement. This is just a lot easier for me to get a hold of. I don't have to order it. I don't have to wait for it to be shipped. If I run out on a, say a Saturday, um, I'm not out today, but it has happened before where I run out Saturday morning, forgot that I needed to get some. There's usually a hardware store open around me at least until two o'clock or so. And so I can go over there and usually pick up what I need. Um, so that's how I get it, and that's why I use this. It's just a lot easier to get. Uh, one trick on these cans, though, when you get one of these paint cans, they also sell this in a smaller quart can, um, which is fine if you don't go through a lot of glue. Um, you can certainly buy that. But what I end up doing is, instead of opening this lid like you would a, a paint can, normal paint can, and then trying to pour that, you're going to get it everywhere, especially if you're trying to put it in one of these smaller containers we're about to talk about. And so what I like to do is I'll take a screwdriver or a punch of some kind, and punch a hole in the top, a, a pour hole there. And then I just have a scrap piece of leather that I put over the top of that. And once you get a little glue build up on the top of this can, that'll stop the air from going in there. Once you get a little glue build up on that piece of leather and on that can, that'll seal that up to where it'll keep it fresh. I also punch another hole on the other end there, and I just have a little scrap piece of leather that goes in that hole. That's just a vent hole so that it will pour evenly without uh, making a mess everywhere. But that gives you a lot more control when you're trying to pour into one of these containers. So that's something to keep in mind when you get one of these. Don't take the lid off. Even the smaller quart cans, I think that would work a lot better. Um, the other two glues that I've started keeping in the shop, we used to keep rubber cement all the time in the shop just because my brother built boots and in boot making you use rubber cement quite a bit. Um, but for us in the saddle making stuff and just normal saddle shop stuff. We don't really use a lot of rubber cement, but it does have application. And now I'm getting into some of the embossing, uh, the 3D embossing stuff, and there you use a lot of rubber cement. So we picked this up from Renia when we were in Prescott. We've talked about it before, but rubber cement's a little bit different. Rubber cement is not going to be, in my opinion, I don't know everything about um, rubber cement in general, but for, from my understanding, rubber cement is more of when you need to glue something, but it's not permanent. You're at some point going to separate that or take it off. Um, then you wanna be able to get those two pieces apart. This is a little bit more forgiving for that. It does have a lot of application. So keeping a little can or even one of those little jars with a brush in it of rubber cement is probably um, something good to have in your shop when you do need it. Um, but we buy these quart ones here from Renia and that, that takes care of all the rubber cement application we have. Um, and then I've also started keeping this water-based contact cement that Maker's Leather Supply sells. This glue here has virtually no fumes or anything like that. It's a lot um, easier to use in the shop, a lot better for, like I've got my kids in the shop a lot of times and I, even though I'm gluing up a lot of stuff, there is a lot of glue um, going on inside the shop. Um, in general, I don't want them just hovering over the contact cement um, if I can help it. So I kind of got started letting them use this and I feel a little safer with this. And it actually works really well. Um, and so they enjoy it. So this is the glue that they use and I've actually used it on a couple projects and it does work fairly well. So um, if you're looking for a lower fume based kind of glue, something that works a little better there, um, then definitely check out Maker's Leather Supplies water-based um, contact cement because it is really good stuff. Um, so those are basically all the three glues that I keep. I do keep some wood glue in here for different applications when I'm doing certain things. I also keep some epoxies and stuff like that. When we get into another supply video, I'll go deeper into some of the other supplies. And we do have a, a non-leather craft supply video that we did that of, of various things that I keep in the shop that aren't necessarily leather craft uh, supplies. But now let's get into the different containers, the things that I hold my glue in. Um, the first thing is most of y'all have seen this and uh, a couple hundred videos here 
of my nasty glue pot here, but this glue pot I've had for probably 20 years, maybe. Um, maybe not quite that long. It's been with me most of my career, um, and it's just got a lot of glue buildup on it. This is one of those Teflon coated, um, let me move some of these out of the way. This is one of those Teflon coated uh, glue pots with the um, kind of raised up center section there. It's got a brush here in the top. You can take uh, the handle and you can replace these brushes. So as these brushes get kind of like this one here is getting pretty wild, but I pretty much nowadays only use this glue pot pretty much for saddle saddle things or if I'm gluing up a bigger project. So I'm not trying to do a real fine uh, pinpoint job of my gluing. I'm just trying to get glue over a big area. And so I'll use that. And sometimes if I'm doing a lot of gluing, like gluing skirts, um, putting wool skin on skirts and things like that, I will actually use a wool dauber or a wool pad and um, occasionally we have these available on the website. Um, I know a lot of y'all get disappointed because we sell out of them so fast, but I don't always have enough to put on the website, but just some scrap sheepskin works great too. And I can actually take this can and we've got a saddle skirt that's fairly, fairly large. And I can pour a line of this glue along that saddle skirt and then use this pad to smooth that around. And I can cover a lot more area quicker than I can with this brush. So that's something to keep in mind too. You may want to wear some uh, gloves or something when you're working with this glue because it will get on you even through this pad. So that's something that I do there, one little trick. But these glue pots are really good. They don't tip over. Um, very rarely do they tip over. If they do on me, it's usually when I've got it sitting in, a, in the ground seat of a saddle while I'm gluing up a front or something like that, it'll slip off the stand. Um, but in general, they're pretty stable. You can leave the glue on them. You can take the glue off, whatever you prefer to do. I, I don't know about y'all, but I pretty much like how this looks, so I just kind of leave it like that. The other good thing about having a little bit of glue buildup at least on the top is that when I leave for the weekend, or if I'm leaving town, say to go to a show, or we're gonna be gone out of the shop for a couple days, I will take my brush before I leave, go around the top of this, and then seat that down. Um, and that right there, as that glue dries, it's gonna seal this glue pot from air it'll hold glue. I've had it hold glue. I mean, we were in Prescott, we came back and I needed to use this and I opened it up. You got to fight it to get your brush out of there at that point. But when I opened it back up, um, the glue in there was still pretty good. It wasn't too gummy. It wasn't too dried out. You can always add a little bit of acetone to that, stir it up. It'll thin back out and it's good to go. But that's kind of a good deal with, with any of these glue deals is to be sure that they're uh, sealed up from air because the air is going to evaporate the, uh, the the agent in there that's keeping it thin so that you can use it, so it's gonna begin to dry out. So you just wanna keep the air away from it. But that's kind of the traditional um, infamous glue pot there. Um, this one here is a very neat um, applicator. A gentleman in Waco, uh, I think two years ago now, two or three years ago, uh, gave me this, sent this to me to try. And um, he just wanted to, wanted to give me one. It was one he used in his shop and he thought it might be handy. He also gave me a couple of these little applicators. I think they're silicone. They're really soft. You can also use, they make some in metal. Um, I've seen some of these little spatulas, I call them, or whatever, these little applicators. that are actually like a real thin metal and they work great too. But the neat thing with this is it's got, um, anytime you're gonna use a plastic bottle, you wanna be sure that you do a little research and find out what number plastic this is to make sure that the glue is not gonna eat up the plastic. Um, sometimes, anytime you're messing with chemicals or anything like that, you wanna be sure that you uh, do your research so you know what you're putting into there is not gonna react with the plastic and cause it to degrade. Um, so, But the neat thing with this is it's got a little spout on it and you can really pinpoint where you're gonna put your glue and then you can use this little applicator and just really get it exactly where you want it. It's not gonna make a mess. If you try to use a brush like this um, to really get it in a certain spot and not somewhere else, you're gonna make a mess. So this right here is really handy. Also what I'll do sometimes if, if I'm doing that is either squirt some on top of this glue pot or I'll just take and smear some on there. Then I can take this applicator and grab a little bit of glue on there and now I can apply that glue onto my project. And that's gonna be a lot, um, give me a lot more control than, than anything else. And so that's usually a, a lot quicker than, than uh, anything else. But this thing is really handy. And so if you have some of these bottles that'll work with, with contact cement in there, or even Aaron's 
um, water-based, then that's a, th these are great handy little things to have around. Uh, next up is kind of, for me, they're just kind of nostalgic and traditional. Um, I saw years ago, Peter Main had one of these glass jar uh, contact cement containers and his is covered in glue completely. Um, I've seen a couple pictures of his on Facebook and stuff that he's posted over the years and I always just thought it looked really cool. So when I was apprenticing, the man that I apprenticed with didn't allow any glass in the shop. The only glass that he would allow in the shop was Miller Lite bottles on Friday. Um, outside of that, he didn't allow any glass. And so um, we didn't have any of these, but I've seen these around. I really like them. Maker's Leather Supply now has these available. Um, that's where I got this one. And they're just a really neat glue pot. Um, this one is much the same as this glue pot. There's not a whole lot of difference to it. Um, the only thing I like about having another one, I keep this one over on my bench usually because I don't want it to fall off of one of these cut tables. So I usually very rarely will use it over here unless I'm using it and then putting it back. But the neat thing about having another one of these is that this brush here looks a lot better than the brush in that, in this glue pot right here because I only use this one when I'm doing more finer work and I'm not really doing saddle work or large areas that I'm trying to glue, this is the one I go to because I just, the brush stays a little bit cleaner. So when I do that, I've got basically, the reason I'm doing it is I got two different brushes and one that's kind of trashed and one that's more new. And so that's why I like to keep this one. And so this is my smaller project glue pot um, that I use. Um, the neat thing with Peter Mains that I always thought was if he dropped his, he could have already dropped it. It could be broken. You wouldn't have any idea because it's got so much glue on the outside of it that, uh, the glass isn't going anywhere. It's still sealed up. It's not going to leak. It's uh, It's got a ton of glue around it. So um, I guess that would protect it some if you just kind of let that glue just build up on there over time. It takes, I'm sure, years to get it that way. Um, but then I've got this little bitty one here. And this one, uh, Makers, I got it from Makers as well. It's just a little smaller. And this one has the kids' um, water-based glue in there, the Makers Leather Supply water-based contact cement in there. And so that actually is handy for me when I do want to use some of that glue. It's always fresh in here. I've got a brush, I'm ready to go, I can use it. Both of these jars have these types of lids here. This one adjusts as well on this pot. You can push that the, uh, the stem of the brush down or up to raise the level of where that brush is hanging out inside the pot. I very rarely change this one. I've got it pretty well set where I want it. Um, but these here, you can unscrew this little nut here and then you can come up or down with the shaft of that brush and adjust the height of where your brush is reaching into the end of the jar. I don't find that I adjust that a lot, but it, it is nice that you have that ability to adjust that length because especially on these, sometimes the only drawback is you've got to really be sure you wipe on the edge of the jar a lot because they'll get a lot of glue right here along this shaft of the, of the brush and then you'll go to use it and it'll drip from here onto the table or worse onto a project that you're working on. So you don't want that to happen. So you find that you're wiping a lot to try to get that glue off of there. So raising that brush up to the level of your glue will really help you because then the whole thing's not down inside the glue and that'll save that. This glue pot here has this thing here. And so it tends to help that a little bit. It doesn't really drip off of the shaft of the brush as bad on that glue pot, but that's just something to consider. But they are adjustable. Um, they're really nice. They're worth having one. I think they're nostalgic. I think they're really cool. They've been around a long time and I just really like those jars. I believe too, they, somebody makes, I don't think Makers does, but I think somebody makes one of these in a plastic one. Basically has the same lid. I've seen them. I don't know if they're still available, but it has the same lid and same brush and everything. It's just a plastic container. Um, and that might be a little bit better, I guess, if you're worried about breaking them in your shop. Um, and then last, I've got this glue pot here, which we've talked about in a Monday morning video. Um, I've been wanting one of these for a long time. My brother had one of these when he was building boots. I've been around them many times. They're just really nice. Um, they hold the glue in this back section here, and then you take this. This is just basically to keep that tight to where you don't get any air in there, because again, the air is what's gonna dry out your glue. Um, and then you can set that right on top, and it's just got a simple chip brush, which is just a wooden handle. These are the cheap brushes from the hardware store. You can usually pick these up for a dollar a piece. They come in all kinds of different widths. These little one inch chip brushes are, are absolutely fine. These might be an inch and a half um, or inch and a quarter, but you can get any size chip brush that you want. But the nice thing about it is it's got this little 
so if I can get it without dropping my brush here, but it's got this little bar right here on the front. And so when you go to wipe off your brush, it's very simple to get your brush cleaned off and you're not gonna drip on your way to what you're actually gluing. Um, and the whole brush is not saturated in glue or sunk down into, into glue. It's just the tip of the brush because of the uh, de depth of the well here. And so it makes it really nice. There's always fresh glue up in this well, as long as it's got glue in it. Um, in order to fill this up, you would turn this this direction. It's got a lot of glue in it right now, but you turn it up this way and you would pour your glue in through here. Um, and then once it's in there, you can fill this up as high as you want. And then it's got an opening in there and the glue will run into this well. And so it tends to always keep you with fresh glue not you don't have something at the bottom that's kind of drying out and getting gummy and you're just pulling off of the top and it's starting to separate this kind of helps to keep that glue more mixed up i guess um, and it, it just seems to work a little bit better so i really like that glue pot i like how it works um, again it's it's kind of hard to tip over if you bump it on a bench you're more likely just going to move it it's really not going to tip over it's got a nice base to it um, they have these, I think, in three different sizes. It's, I know there's two different sizes, but I think, I think they have one that's smaller than this one. I think I ended up with a medium size one. Um, they're not the cheapest glue pot in the world, but they're very good. And you're not, I mean, unless you throw something heavy on it and crush it, there's really nothing that can go wrong with this glue pot. Um, and then the brushes, the thing I like about it is, again, you can go to Lowe's or Home Depot, your local hardware store, and you can buy a sack full of these little chip brushes and keep them in your shop. Um, and like I said, I think they're like a dollar a piece. You can throw them in a bag, have them in a cabinet, and then when this brush kind of gets nasty, you throw it in the trash, grab another one, and you're good to go. Versus all these glue pots here, all three of these, you've got to order the little brush that goes on the end of these. And so people sell them, Aaron sells them, Weaver sells them, a lot of folks sell them, but that's something you've got to order and have brought in. And so I like having things that I don't really have to order if I don't have to, if I can get it at the hardware store, just a little more efficient. But okay, so those are our main, that's my main glue containers, the, the, the types of containers that I keep in the shop, types of glues that I use. Now, what do you do if, you, if you're just getting started in leather work, you're just kind of getting going and you just need some glue, you bought you a can, say this size of contact cement from the hardware store, ready to make your first belt, you're using it with a paint can, taking that whole thing off, using a chip brush, and then having to throw that brush away because it can't sit in there. What you can do if you want to make a DIY glue pot, something simple, but you can take a pickle jar, just a normal little pickle jar with a smaller top lid on it um, or anything like that, something glass. You can put your glue in there, clean it out first, obviously, um, but then you can take that lid, take a screwdriver, and punch a hole in the top of that lid that will hold that chip brush in place so it, you can run the handle of the chip brush up through that lid and then that way when you want to use your glue you just got to unscrew it your brush is sticking out of the top of the of the lid of that of that pickle jar you can take that off you can apply your glue and everything you need to do put it right back down in there and screw it tight your brush is hanging out in the glue which is going to keep that brush from drying out on you and then your glue is uh, away from the air for the most part. Once you, get, once you get to using it, that hole that you made in the top of that lid will end up gumming up with glue and everything and really holding that brush well and also keeping the air out a lot better. And so that's just kind of one of the simple, quick ways, easy ways to, uh, to make a glue pot that'll work. Um, I've also seen people do where you can take like a Dr. Pepper bottle, plastic one, or even a, a, a Coke bottle, anything like that, and put your glue in there, screw your cap on there, and then take a nail and punch a hole in the very top of that cap. And then you can take and squeeze the glue out, just like one of these. You can squeeze it out through that hole wherever you need it, and then you can just use a piece of uh, scrap sheepskin or a sponge, whatever you want to use, and you can spread your glue out that way. Um, I used to do that when I was in college, and I would assume that you know it worked fine with whatever plastic those bottles are. But again, do a little research, make sure that that glue it's not gonna react with whatever plastic bottle you put it in. So um, fail safe way is just to use glass. So a glass pickle jar will work fine too. But, um, but if you're at a show or you get online, you wanna get a glue pot. Um, I got this one from Renia and uh, at the show in Prescott. I think Aaron has these on his website uh, at Maker's Leather Supply, but last time I looked, he was out of stock. Springs, Springfield Leather might also have these as well as these. Aaron at Maker's Leather Supply sells both of these. So there's a lot of options out there for your glue containers for your shop. Biggest thing is just get something to keep the air away from it.
keep your brushes in good shape. Find something that you like to use that gives you the control that you need for the projects that you're working on. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you got something out of this video. And be sure to go to dgsaddlery.com, sign up for the Leathercraft newsletter, and we'll see y'all in the next video.